Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Beer, Wine, and Shine. Today, we're going to make another batch of blueberry brandy. I got a bunch of blueberries, and I made a blueberry mead and a big batch of blueberry brandy. I'm doing a, two stripping runs on that brandy. And I've decided that if I had just five more gallons, I could fill my still completely. So that's what I'm going to do. I went out and I got me some more blueberries. So we're going to make the blueberry wine today for the brandy. These are just you know great value brand uh three pound packages i think they were like i don't remember how much they were uh i got my bucket down here can't see it but i guess you just have to take my word that i'm not just dumping all this on the floor not going to make you watch me open every bag but these are about half thawed yeah they're about half thawed now I've got some pectic enzyme here I don't really know how much to use to be honest my package don't say the place I got it from I bought a bunch of stuff from this place it never says how much to use. It just says what it is. I've looked it up online and they're always talking per gallon. It's uh, half a teaspoon per gallon. I don't know how many per pound. Um, probably going to put in too much. Eh, it happens. I'm basically just going to put in... I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon right here on top of the first three pounds. And probably every bag I'll put in another quarter teaspoon. Um, I'm only going to make somewhere between four and five gallons. I'm going to use four gallons of water plus 30 pounds of blueberries. But I'm going to put my blueberries in there first to make sure I have enough room. <laughs> Six and a half gallon bucket, so I should be fine. Um, as far as the yeast today, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I got some 71B here. I like it. It's supposed to take out fruity notes, and of course we got fruit here. More flavor. I'm really trying to make this one a flavor bomb. Get more of it out in the distillate. Anyway. So, now that I've explained what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get her done. I messed up again. Imagine that. I only got two bags in there before I remembered. But, normally, you would put all your berries in the bucket. You would put in your pectic enzyme. You could add a little water if you want to. But then you would put it in the refrigerator or something cold mass ready. And you, you would leave that pectic enzyme in there at least 24 hours. Then you would add your sugar and your yeast when it gets up to pitching temperature. And then two to three times a day, you would do what's called a punch down. Where you actually literally have to push all the berries back down under the water. Because this is a lot of berries. This ain't just, you know, a pound or two. This is 30 pounds for four or five gallons. Okay, so that's enough berries that these berries will fill up during fermentation with CO2 gas. They're all going to get underneath each other and all trying to go to the surface. They will literally raise all the berries up two to three inches, probably more if you let it go. Well, so, that, so you have to push it down because if it's not below the surface, they'll dry out possibility that mold could happen even though that there is a lot of co2 gas in there not oxygen so maybe maybe not but it's a risk if it's not below the liquid like if it's not wet 
It's not in the liquid, in the must. It's not doing anything. It's not giving you sugar. Yeast are probably still in there working, although they will dry out and die. So they're not giving you any sugar. They're not giving you any color. And they're not giving you any flavor. Well, I can't babysit these. I need these to go and go on their own. I got me a big ass brew in a bag. I got me some stainless steel in the bottom of it. It's probably about five pounds. And a zip tie. I'm going to put all the berries in this bag. And then I'm going to put it down about as tight to the, bat, to the berries as I can and put the zip tie there. I'm not going to squeeze them. I'm just going to put them down tight. The reason being because this bag is about as big as my bucket is. So if I didn't do that, then the berries would just float. The weight would be on the bottom and the berries would be floating. I need it to be tight enough that the weight holds the berries down. All right, guys, I got me two gallons of hot water here. It's steaming. It comes right off my spout at about 120. Um, two gallons of water, 10 pounds of sugar, stir. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Although, when you stir it, you want to stir it, like stir it, get you a good whirlpool. And then pour it. And then you want to stir it until it goes crystal clear. Or like a yellowish clear. It'll be clear though. It won't be white. I'm going to do this off camera for the sake of the microphone. Um, I think you got the picture though, right? I made a slight miscalculation. I underestimated... How much space 30 pounds of blueberries is going to take up in a six gallon barrel? It ain't going to fit. <laughs> well, like it'll fit, but there ain't no room for fermentation. So, change of plans. Not to mention, I only got like two gallons of water in the thing. So, I was going to put it up here on the table, stand up and talk, but it's right here. It's a 10 gallon barrel. It's got 30 pounds of blueberries. 10 pounds of sugar, 4 gallons of water. My gravity reading is like a you know, 1088, 1086, 1087, 1088, somewhere around right there. Um, now there is a little bit of sugar in the blueberries that has not been extracted yet. I'm just going to let this sit. I don't know if I'm going to have time to 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 videotape. I might, if I remember, I will of me actually pitching the yeast. Um, but I'm probably going to do it right before I go out the door to work tomorrow. Hope, sure, hope I don't forget that part. Kind of important part. Anyway, um, so that's where it's at, and that's what it's going to do. Because these blueberries are going to stay in this barrel. I ain't pulling these ones out. They're staying in there the duration. That's why I got them in the biggest brew bag I got. I got the most weight. They're not floating. They're sunk. So, they should be okay. See you in a couple weeks. I got some Fermade K here. Loudon 71B. This is my blueberry. Um, as you can see, my weights did not keep this down. I don't think it's done yet. A lot of degassing going on. The berries don't look bad. I was really hoping that my weights would hold this down. It's not doing it. It's just taking a lot longer than what I'd hoped, but it is what it is. Yeah, as you can see, it's got a long way to go. 10.24. All right, folks. Our blueberry wine is done. 
time to, you know what that means. That means it's time I got to do some cleaning up around here. And we going to get that still fired up. That's happening today. Got a lot of things to figure out lighting and hopefully be one of them soon. Anyway, so, ooh, I just smelt that. Oh, it smells like blueberries. So this is my blueberry low wines um, that I have distilled. So what I'm doing here is I just want to check it and make sure it's below 40%. And it is exactly 40% right now, okay? The reason why you want to do that is because you never want to put anything in your still over 40%. Um, if you do, you are going to run the risk of, of fire and other bad things happening. Um, you're reaching the flashpoint. Um, I'm sorry about, I spilled some sanitizer. I'm not lactating, I swear. So we're just gonna pour this right back in here now. So now this is 40%. That's max. However, I am going to be putting in my fresh blueberry wine that I just made. It's that uh, four or five gallons that I made in that 10 gallon barrel. Blueberries been sitting there just flavoring it up this whole time. It's going to go in on top. But I am going to be testing it before I put it in there. Just to make sure that I don't need to add water. Um, I don't like to have 40% in my still. Just because 40 is the number. Um, I don't know if that's already a conservative number or if that's a hard line number. Um, I just like to err on the side of caution. I run electric, I don't run propane, um, you know, and I just like to err on the side of caution. I want to be safe. So 35 is the most I'll ever put in. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to dump this over here in the still and we're going to get after it right now. Now, I just tested this. You saw me test this earlier. I got a whole bunch of blueberries in here. I was going to press them. Kind of a lot of time for all that. I've got my wine in there, right? Now I need to get into my still. Now, because I'm awesome, I have a hop, hop spider. Okay, now I got my pump here. This is uh, my extra pump that I have. I'm just gonna put it right down in there because I don't want to. I don't want to siphon and strain and all that. Get my clamps off here. Make sure that I'm not gonna lose them. Um, I'm just gonna stick that right down in there, just like so. I got my pump down in here. Now guys, don't be an idiot. When you got this pump, this hose here, you stick the hose down in there, hold on to it when you plug your pump in, because if not, your hose will come out there like a fire hose and start spraying your house with wine. And I will not confirm nor deny that that just happened. Okay, um, <laughs> don't be an idiot. <laughs> Okay, then I just drop that down in there. Now this should be able to sit right on that sediment, but I'm gonna hold it up a little bit, just to make sure. Um, she's pumping away. All right, there's my water level. That's pretty much full 13 gallons right there. That's pretty much full 13 gallons. So um, my measurements were spot on, so. That's my homemade 
thing I made here. 220. We're going to be using it today on a 5,500 watt element. 40% power, pulling about 7 amps. 243 volts. Always make sure you check your gaskets now. So these gaskets is for the lids. Can you see that? This side has a groove. This side's flat. See the difference? Groove side goes in, flat side goes against the top of your still. That way when the still pushes down on the lid, it's able to squish and and give a good seal. And this goes the groove side does not go against your pot. All right, guys, we're running now. Got my controller over here where I can reach it now. Play around with the heat. Excuse my mess. Like I said before, this is one of them real kitchens. This ain't one of them TV fake kitchens. And if y'all know how much of a mess you make when you're brewing, I've been a busy boy for the last two days. I'm trying to, can't tell, but I've been trying to clean up as I go. Anyway, a little bit embarrassing, but whatever, we're just going to go with it. All right, so we're slowing down. We're just going to we're just going to play with the fire here until we until we get it right. I'm pulling about 9 amps now. I was pulling about 18 amps heating up. It's about 44% power, 43. This is a, a coffee metal mead that I made. It's about 14%. So, sit back and have a glass with me make something else tasty to drink. Um, we're pulling about 9 amps. But this thing can be so finicky that when you you can move it to where you just don't even not even sure if you moved it. That's probably enough. Um, I'm turning it down because it was running a little fast for me. I'm going to be burning through a lot of ice. But that's okay. I got an ice maker over there making. I got 60 pounds of it in the freezer, so. All right, we just switched jars here. This is gonna be my. My four shots and heads. That's, that's pretty high. I don't really separate my four shots from my heads. Um, not really. There's not really a whole lot in the heads that I ever really like or want to keep, so I don't really mess with it. And I haven't really calculated, I haven't really calculated how much four shots I need. I pretty much just kind of go by taste, you know. So I had 26 gallons of wine that I put in my still here because I filled it to the brim 13 gallons twice and stripped it all down. That left me with a full six and a half gallon carboy. Full of strippings. Hot, um, call that low wines. And then I made another about seven gallons. Um, six gallons. Because uh, I only put four gallons of water in that second batch of wine that I made. However, um, you know, the berries themselves had a lot of liquid in them. I did not squeeze them out because my still was full. So, 
I didn't bother with pressing the berries. Let's see how it tastes. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that. It's only got a little bit in there. Um, because that is, that's good. Um, the reason I'm not going to fill this jar is because I'm not sure if it was quite there yet. I don't, I didn't taste it before I moved it. Okay, I didn't taste it. So I'm gonna have to taste this. I'd hate for there to be a little bit of, of four shots or nasty stuff in there and then fill the whole jar and then it'd be nasty, right? So. Yeah. I think there probably was a little bit left in there. So, um, I'm glad I did that. Okay, now this is how I like to do it. Just a little distilled water. Give me just a little bit of liquor here. Keep in mind how much I get. And get me a little bit of water. Put it in there, okay? Now that's gonna cut it down by half. This is this is pretty hot, okay? So that's gonna cut it down by half. So that's not gonna burn your senses out so fast. Also, you're gonna get a better feel for the flavor. You know what, that's pretty good. I, I'm really kind of liking that. Still has a little pungent on the nose, but. So 33 gallons of wine. I don't know how much nothing all that's gonna be. Or four shots. I, I'll probably collect just a little bit here. I'll probably switch my jars again. And I would rather switch jars quite often in the beginning and towards the end and have 20 jars that I've got to sort through until I find the right jar. And that's just being kind of stingy with your cuts you know because I could sit here right now and be like man that's good you know this jar from this jar was such a change that I thought it was good but then later tomorrow when I come back or whenever I might taste it and be like eh, that's really not as good as this next jar you know because now, at some point, you want to start collecting your hearts, you know, I mean, but w when you're trying to find your sweet spot, you don't want to have any bad stuff in that jar. So, if you take little off at a time, it's going to be your best bet until you really get to know what you're doing, you know, or if you've ran the same thing a hundred times. Now... I wanted to talk a little bit about how I run my still. When I was learning, well, I'm still learning. I'm not an expert by any means. And honestly, I don't think you ever stop learning. I learn something every time. But a lot of the information that I had, you know, wants to talk about a drip, 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 or a drip, 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 or one drip every second three drips a second, um, a pencil stream, a broken stream, you know, and, and that that's all fine and dandy except three drips a second or so, even five drips a second, and that's like half a pint an hour. I mean, it could take 12 hours to run off 
you know, five gallons, okay, of mash, not of liquor. I mean, it take you 12 hours. And I've done it. I've done it many times. And I always started off right about 160. But I'd start running my tails at like 130. 120, 130, 135. You know, it, it was really starting to taste kind of bad at that point. The reason is, is because that's just too damn slow. Not only does it take 12 hours, but you're, what you're doing is running so slow that you're stripping all your alcohol out and you're leaving most of your flavor behind. It, whenever I did that, it never really did taste very good. It tasted like fresh distilled high proof liquor. It didn't have the flavor. I have been doing a lot of research and a lot of talking to other people. Um, other distillers, um, talking to people who make stills. There's a reason that I don't really like the whole drip, drip, drip spurt or pencil stream or stuff like that as far as flow rate goes. The reason I don't like that is because every still is different. Your column size, how tall it is, your condenser size, and, but mainly, the diameter of your column is going to significantly make a difference. If you're running a three inch column or a four inch column at three drips a second um, or a, a half a pint an hour you might um, as well run run a bubble plate and be running Everclear because I mean you're just you're you're <laughs> you're just not doing anything okay so now, if you got a one-inch column, that's going to be significantly different. Okay, if you've got a, if you have a tower versus a um, thumper and worm setup, that's going to make a big difference. Your your line coming off your head and into your worm, um, your thumper is going to make a big difference. So you see what I'm saying, that going by a drip rate or a, a stream or a drip, it's very subjective. And I started asking around. I don't like the drip or stream rate. I like jars per hour. That is a lot better of a way to say it in my opinion so I asked the manufacturer that I got my tower from not this setup but it was tower he said that the two inch tower column should run can produce 1.5 pints an hour one and a half pints. That's three quarters of a quart. That's one and a half of these. Or one of these plus a jelly jar. Okay? An hour. I have a feeling that I'm running a little bit hot. Because I haven't let it go. Now, I asked some other distillers. Um, you know, and they said a quart an hour. So that's a lot better of a, of a distinction in my opinion. Okay. A two inch column can run three quarters of a quart to one quart an hour is a good, is a good run. 
a lot of people can tell you, um, you know, yeah, it takes me about three hours, it takes me four hours, it could take me six hours. Because a lot of that depends on how much alcohol content they had in their mash to begin with. Obviously, a 18% mash is going to take longer than a 10% mash or a 7% mash. Okay? Just depends on, just because of the gallon size, it depends on how much alcohol is in there. So, and I was going to go ahead and time this. So I'm going to start my timer and I'm going to set it for one hour. And we're just going to see how fast my rate is. I'm pretty sure I'm into my hearts now. So we're going to run her. See, to me it still has a bit of a burn on the nose, but it is what it is. 153, 152, 153. That's a lot better than 160s for starts, in my opinion. And I'm also going to be dropping a lot faster because I'm running faster. So I might make it down to 100 proof or 80 proof instead of running into my tails at 130. So anyway, we're almost at half a pint right now. And it's only been eight minutes. See, she runs for a little bit, and then it slows down to, to a broken stream for a little bit, and then it kicks back up to a full stream for a little bit. I hate to touch it right now, because I'm, I'm running my hour test. As far as the taste goes, though, I mean, that's really not bad. For 153 proof. Ooh, that's good. That is good. That's got a lot of blueberry flavor. It's, um... That's pretty much not bad at all. Really, this should have took about 15 minutes, though. So, I'm probably running it a little bit fast. Because right now, I'm getting up to half a pint. And it's been 10 minutes. So, we are going to back this down just a little bit. Um, I really don't want to go over a quart an hour. So, we'll leave it right there and we'll see what happens. Alrighty. Been a long weekend. <laughs> Been a long night. Just about got everything cleaned up. I can't really put anything away because my brew room is that way. Kind of got this big old thing here in the way. So. This has been turning out pretty good. I was collecting in half gallon jars there when I knew I was in my hearts, but then all of a sudden it got a little oily. It slowed down a little bit and it got a little oily, I don't know. So I got a little paranoid that I wasn't even going to get what I thought I was supposed to get. So I started collecting back to pint jars and by the time I thought, well, I could probably go back to half gallons or whatever. Like, it was a little too late for that. So, I didn't. I just went ahead and just collected. It's fine. Still pumping about 190. My proof is... It's finally started to drop. One sixteen. It held like 152 for a long time. Um, and then went down to 148 finally. Then it held one, 
you know, in the 40s forever. And I was worried I was going to start running into my tails again about, you know, at a high proof like I used to. And I, I really want to run into my tails at 100 or at 80, you know, like supposed to. You know, when I was running too slow, I'd run, I'd start off at 160 and real slowly drop, but I'd start getting into tails and, I mean, oil on top, like visible oil on top and just tasting like three types of raw ass, <laughs> you know, um, at like 130, 120, 130. Um, and I never liked that, and, you know, and the flavor wasn't quite where I wanted it, you know, because I was leaving all the flavor in the pot. So, that's why I was really working on my speed and working on figuring out what other people are doing. It is running a little bit fast. Some of this is a little prickly on the tongue, you know, um. But I couldn't get this thing to run right. Like, I mean, it's running right. It's just that I moved this dial to where you can't even t tell that I moved it. And it would go from running uh, three pints an hour to half a pint an hour. <laughs> like, that's how much of a dramatic change. And it's just where it wanted to run without just barely running at all um so you know i just left it there so i've been running about a pint every 20 minutes so that's three pints an hour 20 40 60 right um 30 minutes a pint is about a quart an hour because two pints two quart so 30 minutes um i would have liked to have ran about 35 minutes a pint but like I said, I just couldn't, it, it just wouldn't do it. It was, either, it was either half a pint an hour or three pints an hour. Um, so I just left it at the, at the three pints and then I let it just kind of slowly back down on its own until it, I'm running about nine, eight, nine minutes last one was eight then eight and a half and now it was nine almost nine and a half so it slowly slows down um on its own so far i think it's good i mean there's no oils on top at all that i can see at all i mean it's it's still running crystal clear you know so we're just going to keep going and hopefully I can get her down to 100, maybe 80. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that my proof starts dropping a little faster. Um, like I said, at the high proof, it was just holding those high proofs. Just, just holding it for quarts. Um, I don't know if that's just because I had so much alcohol in the still, but I, mean, I guess I consider it a success. I do think that I'm starting to get a little bit more than I expected. Um, which also kind of worries me that I'm not going to get it down to 100 or down to 80 before I really run into tails. Uh, but also at this point, like I said, I'm running out of time, running out of jars. So now as long as this all turns out, there's quite a bit of, of liquor here, quite a bit of brandy. Um, you know, that's kind of why I, I did a big batch because I don't do it very often. And I had the opportunity um, that I acquired a, a lot of berries and of blueberries. So with, with whiskey, you know, when you make different styles of whiskey quite a bit, you make smaller batches and then when you make something special you make a bigger batch of it because or at least I do because I don't I'm not gonna do it again and there's quite a bit of liquor here 
and I've got different stuff I'm going to be doing with all of it. Some of it's going to be staying, some of it's going to be back sweeten, some of it's going to be doing some other things. I've got plans and I'm going to be sharing it with y'all. So I'm hoping it's going to be some good stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Beer, Wine, and Shine.